Good morning, folks. Uh, today, I want to discuss something that may fly under many people's radars. Um, but first, I want to turn your attention to this series right here. This is Shadow of the Batman. It reprints uh, Batman issues 471 to uh, 479. Um, and what this is, basically, is uh, this is the run... Uh, done by Marshall Rogers uh, and Steve Englehart, or well, towards the end, uh, Marshall Rogers and Len Wein. Uh, but these, in my opinion, are some of the best Batman comics um, to ever be published. Um, and because I think um, not only is, is the writing really fun and definitely takes like a more Marvel uh, sensibility uh, to these characters... Um, the art is extremely solid. Um, however, I will admit, uh, some of this, like, earlier stuff, uh, reminds me very, very much of John Byrne. Um, and, like, sort of like a, a less refined John Byrne. But, as this run goes on, you will actually see Marshall Rogers transform into Marshall Rogers. Um... But something something that I that I I want to point out uh, is that um, Marshall Rogers was a young buck around this time. He had only just got into comics um, after uh, leaving his um, his architecture job uh, because he um, he wanted to do something creative, and um, there wasn't really much of a creative outlet for architecture around that time. So what he would do is that. Um, he would leave that, and then he'd go to Marvel, where um, he would do black and white magazines like Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. And then he would also uh, publish some like short stories in, in uh, Epic Magazine, <clears throat> and um, sort of just, just stuff like that. Oh, something I also really like about the Shadow of the Batman reprints is that it reprints um, a different story uh, from Marshall Rogers that was like totally unrelated. Um, I'm pretty sure this is, like, one of his, um, House of Mystery stories. Um, but, oh, and they also uh, reproduce the covers quite nicely. So, <clears throat> the, the thing about this is that, um, whenever, whenever Rogers came to DC, um, he, um, he and Steve Englehart ended up on Batman together. And... It is it is widely considered one of one of the greatest uh, collaborations. But another thing that I want to point out is that these pages are inked by Terry Austin, um, another um, Marvel alumni, probably best known for inking John Byrne on um, his uh, X Men run. But yeah, this um, this definitely uh, very much uh, speaks to like the um, the the Marvel sensibilities. I feel. Oh, this issue right here is really good. Uh, this is actually where uh, they debut the brand new uh, version of Deadshot. And, um... It's, uh... And it's something that, that I always like to point out whenever looking at Marshall Rogers' work is, um... If you really, like, take a look at his architecture, it's, like... It's super sound. And, um... Very, very accurate. Uh, which I, I think is, like, a pretty big advantage, uh, whenever you're a comic book artist. But, yeah, like, a lot of this really does invoke, um, like, the very few times that John Byrne drew Batman. Like, that's what this reminds me a lot of. Uh, however, those would come much later. Um, but, oh, man, there it is. There's the, the, the cover. Which they don't reprint in this for some reason. Uh, which sucks because it's one of the very best covers. But yeah, this feels very John Byrne-esque. Um, and here's uh, the continuing story from, from the last issue. And, uh, oh, something else I should point out. All of these have brand new covers on them. And they're they're gorgeous. They're really, really good. Um, this is probably Marshall Rogers' claim to fame uh, during this run. Because this right here... I want to show you the cover. This right here is the Laughing Fish story. The Laughing Fish 
for those of you unaware with comics, un unaware with the comics, uh, probably know it from the Batman the Animated Series episode. Um, and, um, it is basically, um, almost word for word in some scenes. It's kind of amazing. Uh, however, Rupert Thorne, uh, is included in this. So, I'm, I'm only gonna show just a little bit more of this, uh, and then we're, we're gonna talk about the actual, uh, subject at hand. Uh, but, worth mentioning, Laughing Fish and Sign of the Joker are two of the very best issues of Batman I've ever read. Uh, they're extremely solid, uh, really fun and interesting stories, and they definitely call back to, like, the Golden Age, but the good Golden Age, like, before, um, before it got, uh, really stupid, um, like, 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 whenever the Golden Age was, um, just, like, just, like, brand new, I guess you could say. Also, um, this is one of my favorite, uh, Batman panels right here. And then we have uh, another Marshall Rogers story that I um, believe is um, more prehistoric, which is pretty cool. And there's uh, there's the cover of Sign of the Joker reproduced. Um, finally, the, this is the one with uh, Len Wein. And this is um, actually the introduction of Preston Payne. The, uh, the third Clayface. And, um, this is definitely, um, I think the tightest issue out of these all. Uh, it, you can really see that, like, uh, Rogers is, like, fully in his element. And, um, he's really starting to draw, like, how he would be known for. Um, even if the story is a little, um, a little spotty in of itself. <laughs> But yeah, just like just looking at stuff like this, it's it's it feels a lot less John Byrne once you get once you get here, like compared to the to the first issue. And I love the Preston Payne Clayface design. It's so so cool and creepy and weird, super out there. And then we finally have um, the last uh, story. Yeah, okay, here we go. This is one of the House of Mystery stories. Um. Super solid stuff, man. It's a it's a shame that we lost um, Marshall Rogers so soon, um, two thousand seven. But so now that we've talked about that, let's talk about this. This right here is David David Anthony Crafts uh, Comics Interview Company, um, one of the uh, very um, mediocre interview magazines, but it had a subsidiary where they, they reprinted stuff, and this is the Comics Review, a, um, a series of magazines uh, that reprint uh, comic strips. And inside of this comic strip, um, besides the covers done by Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, inside lies a Marshall Rogers Batman comic strip. Uh, and this was done much later. And, it, and the work in here very much evokes um, how Batman looks on these covers, um, because, uh, these covers were done in 1985, this stuff was done in 1989, and you know, 1989, pretty big year for Batman, and they actually call back to that in this, as this technically takes place right after the Tim Burton Batman movie, which I find extremely fascinating, um, but... This, uh, this story here, it only lasted, uh, three months, uh, from November to January, um, of 1989 and, uh, 1990, and, uh, it was written by Max Allen Collins, uh, who wrote the first eight issues of the post-crisis Batman run, and it's, um, it's inked by Jonathan Nyberg, um, and the work is much, much different from, um, oh, hold on. I just pulled out a Dick Giordano issue. There we go. The work is much different, um, from the inking done by Terry Austin. You see, D Terry Austin has a very specific, like, inking style that is very unique to him. Um, and Jonathan Nyberg, I feel like, um, sort of evokes, like, a lot more pulpy type inking. 
Um, and it's it's worth uh, pointing out that Marshall Rogers has has definitely sort of he sort of found his style by this point. Um, he's no longer l looking like John Byrne. He's now um, looking like Marshall Rogers. Um, and, and the story is nothing to write home about. It's very simple. Uh, there's a drug pusher in Gotham City, and a lot of kids are starting to get hooked on smack. Uh, and uh, Catwoman, who in this is a um, a recovering drug addict turned artist, um, is going after um, these drug pushers. And uh, Batman sees this as a bad thing because if you're gonna fight crime, uh, you don't kill people. You uh, you just subdue them, I guess. Batman is actually very incompetent in this story, and it doesn't take until Alfred suggests that he does some detective work that he actually starts finding leads, and I think that's hilarious. Um, but something that I should point out, this Catwoman design uh, is excellent. I love it, especially um, with the, the C on the mask. Um, it's the, it's the Marshall Rogers Catwoman design that we should have gotten to see back in the 70s. Um, but, uh, we unfortunately, uh, did not. And, um, you can really see, uh, the Marshall Rogers, um, the, the Marshall Rogers Batman. Oh, yeah, this, uh, this panel's also really nice. I like this one a lot. Um, but it's worth mentioning, uh, that because this comic was so short... That there's also, uh, like, these magazines are actually padded out with completely uh, different uh, comics. So we have stuff like Modesty Blase um, on, the, uh, on the next issue. Uh, it starts with a uh, Calvin and Hobbes story. You have um, uh, this series, which uh, the name escapes me right now. You have Flash Gordon by Dan Barry, uh, which was the most recent Flash Gordon at the time. You got Hagar the Horrible. Uh, by Dick Brown, uh, the Lee Falk at Sideberry, uh, Phantom, and then of course you have Steve Canyon, uh, by Milton Kniff. Um, but, um, yeah, here we go. Here's the Calvin and Hobbes stuff by Bill, Bill Watterson, one of the very best, uh, comics of all time. Um, but, uh, Batman is actually, um, pushed to the back in, uh, in this, in this one. Uh, but this I feel... Um, much like the, um, the Englehart and, and Ween Rogers run, this very much feels like you, you progressively see Marshall Rogers get better as the book goes on. Though something that I, I would like to point out is that, like, um, some of the action feels a lot stiffer. And I think that's because, um, I, and I think that that's because, like, Rogers is starting to work, like, a little bit more on like focusing on the architecture and um just his figure work and is worrying a little less about um his uh his action i love like i really love the way that rogers draws batman's cape um and um this right here this is one of my favorite um title headers for for any comic strip ever uh just super solid stuff and yeah there you go there's there's some of that architecture being shown off again um and uh, uh seeing stuff like this like it really um evokes the idea of like man i really wish um marshall rogers did a detective book and he did actually um and uh it was called detectives incorporated and was for eclipse comics because after um after he was done with the big two and he wanted to move on to better better more interesting things um he moved to eclipse and and started doing some stuff at eclipse but Oh man, that's a really good silhouette. Um, uh, so something else worth mentioning: Marshall Rogers really gets into like the cartooning aspect of this um, with the, with this character uh, named Bull Pit. Um, he really um, he really plays around with the expressions, and uh, I find that really fun. Uh, and something something very much worth mentioning is that I feel like without Marshall Rogers, you wouldn't have Bruce Tim. Uh, because just looking at this Bruce Wayne, this is almost completely a Bruce Tim Bruce Wayne. Um, and uh, e even the Batman very much evokes like a Bruce Tim Batman. And um, I feel like you really don't get that uh, without Marshall Rogers. Um, here's uh, Selena, uh, the artist, um, talking to Vicky Vale about some shit. And... Uh, 
to be concluded. Yeah, because uh, it's um, it was cut so short. Is that Jose Luis Garcia Lopez? I think it is. I reckon. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but. Um, and then finally, um, story's coming to a close, uh, we got, um, Selena's old main squeeze here, uh, working with this gang, uh, of drug pushers, and so, uh, both, uh, Batman and Selena got a, got a team up, and they got, um, they gotta kick these drug pushers' ass. Look at this glass. Like, that's, that's really impressive. Drawing falling shards of glass is, like, already difficult as is, but... Like, this really, th this, like, this is just really sound. Um, <laughs> I really love, like, the little, um, the little, uh, circle here to, to showcase his reaction. This right here, this is one of my favorite Batman panels of all time. There's, the, uh, there's a lot of my favorite Batman panels in here, because I just, Marshall Rogers is my favorite Batman artist. I'm, like, I've, I've kind of come to accept this after reading, um, the 70s run and seeing all his subsequent stuff, uh, because he actually was on other Batman stories after that, um, he was featured in Batman Special Series, or DC Special Series 15, where, um, he illustrated a, uh, prose story that was written by Denny O'Neill, uh, and then he also did some stuff in the Batman family, uh, he came back to Batman, uh, quite a few issues later, um, on, uh, I believe it was actually, yeah, it was Detective Comics, like, like, just, uh, quite a few issues later, and Batman, uh, fought the calculator, um, and so, uh, Marshall Rogers certainly did, like, Batman work, uh, before this, um, and after, um, his acclaimed run, but I feel like this really showcases, like, some of his best stuff, and it's a shame this was cut so short. This also... Uh, this really evokes that final panel in, um, in, uh, the, um, Sign of the Joker. Yeah, this kick, uh, a lot of the action tends to evoke, like, that Golden Age, um, like, those Golden Age sensibilities where it's just action and, um, and, like, speed line to sort of, to sort of show it off. This is really good, though. Like, I, I really like this right here i like the upside down sound effect that's really nice and um this is uh where we reach our end uh we got we get a little bit of a uh, little bit of flirtiness between um bruce and selena um <laughs> get this really fucking funny line uh which is a call back to earlier on where uh, he said that he's never hit a woman before um and then, um, Vicky, Vicky's like, Vicky's like, oh, they may get the, they may got the story, but they don't got the goods. And, uh, and it, it ends right there. The next issue, Batman vs. the Penguin, by Bill Messner Lobes, Carmine Infantino, and the returning John Nyberg. Um, yeah, I think this was actually one of Bill Messner Loeb's, um, earliest, um, earliest pieces, uh, that he worked on. Uh, and the, the Carmen Infantino artwork is extremely fascinating. It very much evokes, um, his work on, uh, Star Wars in the 1970s. Uh, but even weirder than that, I feel. I, I definitely, I definitely gotta, like, gotta show some of that off, um, once I can get those issues. But, I wanted to focus on Marshall Rogers, because, like I said, he very much is my favorite Batman artist. High up there with Trevor Von Eden, uh, Bruce Timm. Uh, Mike Perlbeck, uh, and Neil Adams, and, um, I think it's really, it's really worth it, uh, for you to track these down. The Comics Review issues 41, 42, and 43, um, come and get these to, to complete your Marshall Rogers Batman collection, and, um, just to, to own all the really great work, uh, that this man did, and, uh, there's actually, um, the, there was a little bit more after this. There was a Legends of the Dark Knight story that he did, uh, and there was a returning, um, like, final hurrah where, uh, he worked with his partner Steve Englehart and they did Dark, Dark Detective, um, which, um, was, I'm pretty sure, his very last story that he ever did before he passed. And so, 
while this isn't the end-all be-all of Marshall Rogers, I do feel it very much um, is the lost story in uh, this amazing, acclaimed 70s run. And I honestly urge you to go seek it out, because I think it's worth it, personally. And... I feel like you'd be you'd be a fool not to not to try to track this stuff down. Um, and now that you are aware of it, um, I hope to see a lot more of these disappear off of eBay because I feel like I I see um, listings for these all the time and people don't know what they have. Um, and uh, I I, I want to see these gone because I I want I want people to complete their Marshall Rogers Batman collection and uh, be satisfied with the great work that this man did.